Welcome to science class. Today, we are going to learn about mutations. A mutation is any change to the DNA sequence, no matter how big or how small. One single nucleotide out of place is a mutation, but some mutations involve the subtraction or even addition of an entire chromosome. Most mutations that only involve a few nucleotides have no noticeable effect on the organism, but occasionally they do. The most significant genetic cause for skin tone difference in humans is a single nucleotide swap in a single gene. Caucasians have an adenine rather than a guanine. One nucleotide out of more than three billion. Mutations can be lethal, but they can also be beneficial. But they can also, as I just said, have no real effect. Today, we're going to learn about the causes of mutations, the types of mutations, and the effects that some mutations can have. Let's get started. We're going to cover the causes of mutations first. Probably the most common source for mutations are copying errors during the DNA replication process. Our cells do a pretty good job at correcting these errors, but some get through. Now, if an error that is not corrected happens when you are 40 years old, that mutation is not likely to impact your whole body. You're already composed of trillions of cells, and although your cells keep dividing, when you're fully formed, cells and the daughter cells that replace them stay in place. Now, if the mutation results in cancer, that's a different story because cancer can spread, but that's a different case. A mutation that goes uncorrected, say at the moment of conception, however, can be a problem because at that point, you're only one cell big. So every single cell in your body will have that same mutation because they are all the descendant of that original cell. A mutation cannot be inherited unless the mutation occurs within the sperm or egg cells of the individual. There are different ways this can happen. One is copying errors during the S phase of interphase, but more extreme errors that affect entire chromosomes can happen during meiosis. We will get into more detail with that later on. There are also specific types of viruses that infect sperm and egg cells, injecting foreign DNA that then lives within the cell, wreaking havoc. Zika virus is one of these viruses. It's been estimated that around 8% of the human genome is viral DNA. Remember, we share genes with all kinds of organisms, and this viral DNA is not necessarily uniquely human. There are many animals that have those same viral genes. Yet another way for an organism to inherit a mutation is through horizontal gene transfer, also called lateral gene transfer. This is common among prokaryotes, but extremely rare in large eukaryotes like ourselves. Again, more details on that later. The examples I just gave are biological sources of mutations, but mutations can have abiotic or chemical sources also. Any non-living agent that causes a mutation is called a mutagen. Examples of mutagens include carcinogens, which are cancer-causing agents like asbestos, radon, UV radiation, radioactive decay, and pretty much everything in cigarettes. Teratogens are agents that cause malformations of an embryo, or in other words, they cause birth defects. Many things which are carcinogens are also teratogens, but not all teratogens are carcinogens such as alcohol and cocaine. In many cases, birth defects caused by teratogens are not a result of a mutation, but rather more like a poisoning, but a few of them are. You may be wondering how UV radiation or the gamma rays from radioactive substances actually cause mutations. UV radiation and gamma rays are two different wavelengths of energy on the electromagnetic spectrum. These particular wavelengths are so energetic and so small that they can pass right through your tissue. But they don't make it very far because eventually they hit something in your body and are absorbed. If they happen to hit your DNA, there is a small chance that whatever part of the DNA they strike will be changed, maybe even destroyed. If it happens to strike your DNA in a place where RNA polymerase makes messenger RNA, which then goes and makes an important protein, well, that's bad news. Now we will move on to the different types of mutations. Usually when we talk about mutations, 
we are talking about very small mutations that only affect one gene. These are unimaginatively called gene mutations. If a mutation happens to affect only a single nucleotide, then it's known as a point mutation. All point mutations are always single gene mutations. Examples of point mutations are substitutions, where a single nucleotide is replaced with a different one. An insertion, where a single nucleotide is inserted somewhere along the DNA sequence, and a deletion, where a single nucleotide is removed somewhere along the DNA sequence. Let's investigate this using an analogy. Here's a sentence made of three letter words. You should remember that proteins are built using codons, which are sequences of three nucleotides. So we have the sentence, the big fat cat ate the big bad rat. Let's perform a substitution. Now it says the big fat cat ate the big bad rat. While one of the words changed its spelling, the sentence still makes sense. It still means the same thing. You should also remember that almost all amino acids have more than one codon. This means that even if the nucleotide is incorrect, there is still a chance it will end up coding for the same amino acid, and the protein will still be functional. When a mutation does not end up changing the protein or has no side effects, it's called a silent mutation. However, if we substitute differently, the original sentence changes to the big fat car ate the big bad rat. That doesn't make any sense. If the equivalent were to happen to our messenger RNA, then that codon would be asking for a different amino acid. For example, instead of CAG, which codes for glutamine, it changes to CAC, which codes for histidine. One amino acid out of the dozens, hundreds, or thousands that make up a protein may have a catastrophic effect, or a mild effect, or a positive effect. It's impossible to predict. But in any case, when a single amino acid in a protein is altered because of a mutation, it's called a missense mutation. Substitutions and deletions are much worse. If we delete a letter from our original sentence, now the sentence becomes thuba igv atk ada tet heb igba adder at. Or if we substitute a random letter, we get the bib gafa taka tat eth ebi gaba dra t. Now, admittedly, I could have deleted the very last letter, and then only one word would be wrong, or inserted a letter at the very end. But I wanted to illustrate just how dangerous insertions and deletions can be. They have the potential to screw up every single amino acid in the protein sequence. These are called nonsense mutations because, well, as you could see, the sequence makes no sense when an insertion or deletion occurs. Some mutations involve fragments of an entire chromosome being altered. The smallest human chromosome still contains between five to 600 genes. So a tiny change to the chromosome results in the change in several genes. What would lead to a chromosome being changed? The most common cause for chromosomal changes is errors during crossing over and meiosis. In meiosis, the chromosomes are reduced, then split. Sometimes the chromosomes are not split evenly, and some cells end up with greater or fewer than 23 chromosomes. This leads to the offspring not inheriting 46 chromosomes. Perhaps they inherit 47, perhaps 45. During crossing over, homologous chromosomes exchange information, but it's possible that one chromosome sacrifices part of its genetic material, but the other one keeps all of its genetic material. Let's go over the different ways chromosomes are altered. In a deletion, part of the chromosome is broken off, leading to missing genes. Williams syndrome and Wolf-Hirschhorn syndrome are caused by partial deletions of chromosome 7 and chromosome 4. Losing part of the chromosome may occur during crossing over, where one chromosome donates part of its genetic material, but the other chromosome does not reciprocate. Sort of the opposite of a deletion is a duplication, where a chromosome ends up with extra genetic material. We can imagine this happening for the same reason a deletion happens, but we are focusing on the chromosome that received information and didn't give any back. In humans, we have what are called proto-oncogenes. These are genes that commonly lead to cancer if they are mutated. If an individual receives duplications of proto-oncogenes, 
that puts them at higher risk for certain cancers. There's a gene that builds a protein that aids in muscle development. That protein is called myostatin. And in individuals that inherit an extra copy, they wind up with incredible amounts of muscle tissue. An inversion occurs when a chromosome's genes are put out of order. If you recall, we learned that homeotic genes line up along the chromosome from top to bottom in the same order that the body is built. As significant of a change as this is, inversions typically don't result in any physical changes to the individual, so it's usually harmless. A translocation is where a chromosome ends up with genes from a non-homologous chromosome. During crossing over, chromosomes 4, remember you have two of each chromosome, exchange genetic material, and there's no problem. But chromosome 4 is not supposed to exchange genes with chromosome 8, for example. It's possible that a translocation is harmless. There's one fascinating condition involving translocation that I want to tell you about. Females have two X chromosomes, the sex chromosomes. Males have an X and a Y chromosome. The Y chromosome only has maybe 60 genes, the most significant of which is the SRY gene. This gene alone triggers male phenotypic development. The SRY gene activates at around six to eight weeks into pregnancy and triggers the development of male sex characteristics. Before this point, the embryo is indistinguishable as male or female. There are no external genitalia or anything else to look for. The activation of the SRY gene causes all kinds of changes, including the movement of the gonads from inside the body to outside the body. In females, the ovaries are stored inside the body, but in males, the testes are stored outside the body in the scrotum. The testes end up perforating the abdominal wall in order to get there, which is why males are more susceptible to hernias. It's also why the ductwork for the testes takes this ridiculous route to the urethra. It goes over the front of the pelvis, loops over the top of the bladder, then connects to the base of the urethra. Anyways, I bring all that up because in the condition XX male syndrome, the SRY gene crosses over to the X chromosome. This can only happen during meiosis in the male parent. The male parent passes on an X chromosome with the SRY gene and the mother passes on a normal X chromosome. The result is the offspring is genetically female, but because of the presence of the SRY gene, they develop phenotypically as male. The range of side effects this can have are pretty broad. Some individuals look male in every sense. In other cases, the genitalia are underdeveloped. No matter what though, these individuals are not fertile and they can't have children. We're going to talk about horizontal gene transfer next. Horizontal gene transfer is when an organism inherits DNA from another organism, but is not its offspring. We briefly covered this in the DNA video. To make it simple, small packets of DNA called plasmids containing only one or a few genes pass from one cell to another. This is common in bacteria and it can give a bacteria a trait such as antibiotic resistance from another bacteria. It is the introduction of new genetic material so it is technically a mutation, it just happens in a very different way. Horizontal gene transfer is thought to happen to animals such as ourselves, but it is probably extremely rare, like once in a million years kind of rare. The final type of chromosomal mutation is also the result of meiosis, and it's called non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is where the pairs of chromosomes do not separate the way they should. So instead of four cells, each with 23 chromosomes, you end up with, for example, two cells with 24 chromosomes and two cells with 22 chromosomes. When a cell has more chromosomes than it should, the condition is called polyploidy. Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, and Klinefelter's are all caused by non-disjunction. Many of the fruits you buy in the store are produced from non-disjunction. Bananas and watermelons that do not have seeds are missing the chromosomes that would otherwise produce seeds. Other fruits like strawberries and apples have polyploidy, and they just so happen to contain extra chromosomes with genes that code for flesh production. The odds of a chromosomal mutation being beneficial to the individual are less likely than single gene mutations, but some of them are. 
All of the great apes have 24 pairs of chromosomes, except humans, who only have 23 pairs. The human chromosome number two is uniquely human, and it most likely formed out of the fusion of two other pairs of chromosomes. This is what gave us one less pair than all other great apes. That does it for mutations, at least for now. Now that we know so much about DNA and genes, next time we're going to look into the implications of genetic engineering. Thanks for watching.